Okay then, we just brought the chip in from the workshop and we're going to use a piece of kit now called the Amiga Mini Lab which is this little piece of equipment here, this doohickey and we've got adapter boards mounted on a parallel port box which just does the reading of the chips. You get different adapters for different chips. As you can see I've already got a chip in there but that's from the last time I did it and we're going to need the use of a laptop and over here we've got various other pieces of adapter equipment chip removers different adapters for different types of chips as you can see it's a pretty good comprehensive kit so we're just going to use the TMS adapter as the dog gets out of the way so, setting it up we're going to remove we're going to remove the old chip that I've got here because that's not the one I've just taken off so I'll just move him to one side and while there's no power on no uh, connection to the machine I'm going to make sure everything's seated into place properly you have a little cutout on the corner and a little dot in the middle of the uh, one side of the chip that denotes pin 1 inside the socket there's a little arrow pointing upwards that tells you where pin 1 goes we just gently put him into the holder and then just apply a nice even pressure and push him down firmly. Onto the laptop we need to connect him up, I connect him up I don't know whether it makes a huge difference but I always connect it up while there's no power on there because I don't want to damage it because these things are expensive to replace if you do damage it. Connect up your parallel cable onto the back of your onto the back of your laptop pushing him in firmly into place screen open the Amiga board does need some auxiliary power so we plug that into place as you can see we've got a blue light lit up on the back of the board and we've got a red light on the power of the reader board itself turn on your laptop and just give it obviously a few seconds to boot up we're going to use Amtrak which is for reading the uh, ROMs off the, the chips. If we had an EEPROM uh, chip, which is eight legged, we'd use orange. So we're going to boot up the Amtrak software and a useful piece of information. If you do use this uh, Amtrak software, the software is tied to the serial number of your board you have to use the correct software serial number with the correct board otherwise it won't work we go to this dual chip there you select the manufacturer Nissan, Mercedes, Jeep, Jaguar it's all different immobiliser circuits we're going to select Opal we select immobiliser TMS370 which is the type of chip we're using now oops wrong one click OK and it should be ready to read now we press the power on button at the top of the screen which gives us power down there it says power on up to the light bulb which is boot and then when we press boot we should get some message on screen boot ok great so it's now tried to put the chip it's emulating the car the chip now thinks the car is turned on and then we press the R button at the top of the screen to get a read and there we go as you can see we've got an extensible file that shows lots and lots of characters and numbers and things we go over to the right of the screen and there's a log on button because I've got the immobiliser plus package you press log on and there you go there you have it there's your pin code for that uh, chip 7742 for that one and that's the code that you would have got on your original car pass. Okay, brilliant. Close it down. We're happy with that. So close the software down. And then what we need to do now is transfer the little chip back to its original circuit board. Right. Now we're going to resolder the 
TMS370 back to the board that I've cleaned off now and we're going to use the soldering iron so I'll just get him turned on it's just heating up and again we're going to pay attention to the little dot on the edge which denotes pin 1. Pin 1 goes to the top of the board and we just put him into position I'm going to use a little mover because it's better than my shaky hands and we just get him into a position where we're happy with that he's sat nice and nice and straight on all the pads like that so it is nice and straight on his pads and that's where we're going to just we're just gonna roughly tack him into place to start with and we're just gonna tack him into place so we're gonna just get him in get lots of solder on him just to hold him into place into this position here so he's not going to move around for us there we go let's just tack him into place there that's one that's one that's fine put another bit on the other side don't worry about connecting legs together because you're not going to hurt him it, this is just to hold him into place while you work on the other sides there we go see he's nice and tight on there now he's not going to move we have a flux pen more flux the better it helps the solder flow onto the pads and we just get lots of flux on there which will help it just stick to the pads rather than to the legs together and then we just get lots of solder onto one side like that don't worry about joining the legs together just yet like that and then what we're going to do is using the edge of the soldering iron we're going to drag the solder down across the pads just take a little bit of practice and a lot more solder than I've just put on there as you can see it's starting to move now across all the pins of the leg again don't worry too much about just joining the legs together because it's not, not the end of the world because we are going to clean that up in a short while we just want to get the legs joined up to the pads correctly for now there we are as you can see the pads are soldered to the legs now and we're going to put some more flux onto there to help clean it up holding it down we just gently move the soldering iron along the bottoms of the legs and you can see the solder pulling nicely across and just work it down just getting individual connections on the legs takes a little bit of practice we've already got two legs that are now nice and separate and if we get if we think we've got slightly too much solder on there all we'll do is use the absorbent braid to pull off any excess so we just bob him on there bob your soldering iron against it and just do the same as before and just work it on there and just pull off any excess solder that we have What we want is we want each leg just to be on its own and not touching any others with any solder at all there you go that's most of them done already just this area here just get that one off like that. there we go and each leg now each leg now is not connected to any others just tidy up the solder 
Oh, I've got, got two legs just connected back together there. So still slightly excessive on solder. Just put him back on there and just pull off the excess. There we go. And that's all now nicely soldered together. All the contacts are good. So we rinse and repeat for the other side. This is the side that we put excessive amounts just to weld it to the board. And we get a flux pen back on there. Get plenty of flux on there. And we repeat the same way as we've just done. Heat it up and just drag it down across the legs. Make sure you've got plenty of solder because you need to get the solder down onto the pads. So don't be shy about getting plenty of solder in there. Like that. And just work it across like so. Just pulling it down, just getting it hot, and each leg will separate, which it's doing now. Two, three legs done there. There we are. And then use a little bit of a braided wick just to soak up the excess like that until you've got all the legs separate from all the others there we go there you go that side's done and you just do that for the other two sides then once you've done once you've done the other two corresponding sides you put it back into the box and then I'll show you about soldering the uh, okay then so all I've done is fasten the other sides down with the solder. Neatness is the key. Try and get it as nice and neat as possible. Have a good look with a magnifying glass just to make sure that you've got a good contact. If you've got a multimeter, you could check the resistance between the top of the legs and the base of the solder pad, and you should get a nice, clean solder. Now we're just going to refit the board back into the holder. Like that click it into place and we're just going to replace the two bits of solder on the aerials this is just what we took off earlier and we're just gonna get some solder on there remember how much solder you took off which is quite a lot we're probably going to put similar amounts back on and we just make a nice neat job I've resoldering it back on there. There we go. Nice and easy. That's the soldering portion finished. As you can see, his fit is seated back on nicely. The aerials are connected back up together. We get the back of the box and we just click that back into place. That then goes back around the ignition barrel of your Opal Vauxhall. You then follow the, the procedure as denoted by whichever flavour of uh, ignition immobiliser program, a key transponder cloning, whatever machine you're going to be using. I use the uh, MV, MVP Pro or the Advanced Diagnostics 100 Pro uh, machine of choice. But you know the pin code, now it can be programmed. Thanks for watching, hopefully it's been interesting. Um, I will do some more videos on different types of immobilizers. If you've got any questions, feel free to post them and I will answer them as, uh, as you wish.